hi and welcome back to code tops so today i'm going to show you how you can install airflow with docker on ubuntu so i'm going to show you how you can set up your installation and all so as we all know we know apache airflow is an open source workflow management platform that is what we use for handling all data engineering pipelines so before we move into our installation please if you're a new user just come into this channel Please click on the subscription button. This actually motivates me to do more videos like this. Please try to subscribe to my channel and please give me a thumbs up. So now let's move into our video. Two things we need before we um, go about our installation. We know we are making use of Docker. So you need to have a Docker on your machine. So as well, you need to have Docker Compose installed on your machine. So we need both Docker and the Docker Compose. So what we need to do is we first need to install Docker Engine. So for you to install Docker Engine, go come to your browser and type um, install Docker Engine Ubuntu. Since we are using Ubuntu machine. All right. So just click on it. So, and for people using Mac and for those that are using Windows, you can as well install, just come up to the tab. So we have different distribution. So just like I type in install Docker Engine Ubuntu, just type in install Docker Engine Windows or Mac. So you can use any of this. So now let's move to what we want to do, which is for the Ubuntu machine. So this is how we can go about our installation. So what you need to do is you need to come up here that is you use this particular repository so you do all these steps that was that were listed here so you move down to the docker engine parts so this is where you perform the main installation so under the docker this docker engine you can see there are different plugins you are installing with it so it's not just the docker engine so you see update the heart package index and install the latest version of docker engine container id and Docker Compose. So after you've done your installation, so just come inside your terminal. So whenever you come inside your terminal to confirm that you installed Docker, so just type Docker, then the version, just like this. So you see the version I installed and all. So, okay, that is how you can install Docker Engine. So just like I said, you need both Docker and the Docker Compose on your machine. So before you go about installation of the Airflow. And also, I would like to show you something. Just in case you install Docker on your machine and you haven't set up your permission properties. So what you need to do is, because that means you have to start working using sudo every time whenever you want to access Docker. So what you need to do is you need to use Docker without sudo. So what you need to do is you look at the following steps. So you add the Docker group if it doesn't already exist. So you send this command, you put this command on your um, on your terminal. Then after then you have the connected user. That is, you follow these steps that are listed below. So I'm going to add this under the description below so you can use that. So after you've done this, you've done this first one, and you've done the second one. Now you're going to log out on your machine. So you come down here. Then you log out Then you click on log out. So after you log out on your machine, then you can then you can then restart your Docker. So you find out this command that is these properties that you set is working. So you can then be able to use Docker without using the sudo. So here I have the Docker on my own machine. I already set up my permission so please follow all the steps that i mentioned so it can you can just do what you need to do then let's move to the business of the day so you come to your visual studio code because that's what we'll be working with then we open a file so this is a folder already opened here so what i need to do is i need to create a new folder inside that particular folder so let's create a folder here Let's call the folder my airflow. Yeah, so let's call it my airflow. So now let's move inside the folder. So let's type CD, then move inside the folder. So now 
okay we are already inside that particular folder so what we need to do is okay we have our docker compose installed already so what we need to do is we need to download a particular docker compose file this docker compose file has all the services that we need for our hair flow so and that particular docker compose file has been made available for us by hair flow community so what we need to do is let's go back to our browser again then inside the new tab let's type install hair flow with docker okay then click on this so okay so what i need is this particular ym file so you copy it so this is what we are going to use to download our docker compose file this particular command so now let's move to our vs code so let's paste it inside the terminal so it's going to download inside this my hair flow folder since we're already inside it so just press enter so whenever we open this we should have a docker compose file so that's our docker compose file so let's open it let's see what it looks like so you can see all the setup and all you can see this is the dags these are the volumes dags and plugins so we need to create folders for this particular thing so let's move down to the services so we have the postgres as a database so we have the postgres user and we have the password so we explain more of this so we also have the redis which is the redis we also have the web server so all these particular um services that you're looking at each of them they need to they were going to have their own docker container so you see them whenever i whenever i start running them so let's move back so just like i told us we need to create folders that is we need to create a dark folder a plugin and a log folder so all this particular folder is where all our information will be stored so for instance the dark folder the dark folder will contain all our python files that we need to um, access with the interface so when we run our web server possibly you want to run your python file it's going to be on that particular, that particular dark folder so let, let, let me um, create a folder inside this my hair flow folder so let's add the dags that was the file i used let's delete that flow so um let's create another one plugins let's create another one we have logs so those are the folders that we need so let's just leave it there like that so the next thing we need to do now is to export our environment variables so the reason why we export our environment variable basically i think we do that on ubuntu and mac os majorly so we do that is because we want the users and group permissions to be the same that is in terms of the folders from our host and the folders in our container because without exploiting the experiment variable that means the group permissions aren't going to be the same so now what we need to do now is to export environment variables we're going to use this particular command so you do echo ENP press enter so we have the environment variable so you can see what you have here so this is so this is what we have for the uid and the grid so ensure you set these group permissions most essentially we are using ubuntu and mac OS. so now we need to run a docker compose file so what we need to do is we need to um, ensure like that is running our docker compose file it creates a user airflow and the password airflow so we're going to create both our user and all so let's run the docker compose file so you run that using docker compose up airflow init on enter So it's setting up our user. So you can see the container is run as root user. Up there. So 
so that's good you can see this is what we have we ensure you have this after you run, the, you run that so we already have a user role which is the admin role that's what we set inside our docker compose file so what we need to do now is we want to run all the services that we specified inside this docker compose file you know we have the redis we have the worker we have the web server so we want to run everything so that all our containers will be up and running so for us to run all the services we're going to make use of the command docker compose up just press enter so now you can see this is giving me an error okay it's telling me my bind address is already in use okay so i'm going to show you how you can resolve this error because i'm very sure many people run into this error so there's a way you can resolve this error so i have um a roots okay this is it so this is how you can resolve it when you have something like that i run into the same error so what you need to do is you either use either of these two methods so we have the lsof for the next start so using the lsof you are going to try to listen to look at all the services that are using this port 80. so listing all this listing you are going to list all the services that are using this particular port 80 so you can know which of these services is, is using that port so having seen all the services that are using that port you can kill them by using this solution so I'm going to make use of this particular next stat to see any services that are using that port 80 that I want to use. So let's paste it. So now it says Java and this thing. So what I need to do is I'm going to use the sudo kill. So then you put the PID. So you use this particular value we have here to kill it. So you write 1793. So that's it. So let's do it once again for the other one. So nine seven. So now let's run our Docker Compose up once again. Let's see if the port is available. Let's give it a few time and see if our web server is up. So Redis is running already. So the web server is running. Let's see. Yeah, it's running. So we have our progress. Okay. So everything is running. So what we need to do is let's build this in browser and see if this is working as what we saw here. So what we need to do is let's open a new tab. Then you type local host. So just like what I have here, you type local host, then you put the colon sign, then it's it, then press enter. And then ensure to use the same username and password that you sent. So remember inside a Docker Compose file, let's look inside the Docker Compose file. Let's move down under the Postgres yes you see our username and password so that's what we use so you are sure to use the same username and password that we use so you click on sign in so you can see your home interface so you can see the interface so here you can see the home you can see these are example dags that we had actually came with airflow so now you can run any of this you can run any of this any of this come down here on it then you click on trigger tag so uh, this is telling like this batch operator is running this is coming through so let's click on it you can check the, you can use the graph view so this graph view is what i love using a lot so you can see get more information about what um this particular um that is doing so you can see the queue running success field so you see any of our tasks being filled so this is success so and you can see the results from what you have here you can see the success so you can have different kind of views just look at the calendar so we also have the count so you can see these are more informations you have the code view you can see what the codes look like 
to come down here you can see the code so we're going to talk more about this in our next tutorial so if we talk about the operators and all we talk about the setting attacks and everything so here you can see the audit let's open this audit logs so you can see these are logs all this information all these are logs information so each of these we are going to talk about it in our next tutorial so i hope this tutorial was helpful and is able to give you a walkthrough on how to set up your system and then you understand how you can install airflow with docker on your ubuntu machine for people that are using mac os and windows machine it's possible i might do a video on that to give you a walkthrough on how to go about it so please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and as well give me a thumbs up i would love to see you next time